Hey folks, welcome back to Buckeye Mountain Homestead. I am your host, Travis. Today uh, I want to talk a kind of a mixture of herbalism and prepping on the homestead. And it's it's fulfills both, so if you're into herbs, you might find this interesting. Even though this isn't herbs, it's natural, natural healing, natural medicine. Um, and if you're into prepping, sorry about the shakiness. I'm using this really chintzy, cheapy, cheapy selfie stick, and I don't like it. Anyways, uh, and then if you're into prepping, preparedness, you know, poo-poo hits the fan, uh, I think you'll find this interesting also. And basically, it's a tincture. And it's preparing yourself in case of some type of nuclear radiation. And in a situation like that, I know everyone thinks that, you know, if some type of nuclear bomb goes off, oh, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. Well, unless it falls on your head or you're within that blast zone, you'll probably survive. And most nukes nowadays are usually uh, detonated in the atmosphere. So, or at least that's the typical idea and plan. So, you know, your survivability outlook uh, of surviving a nuke is actually pretty good. Um, unless you live, you know, in an area where they're probably going to strike, which, which is typically your, you know, big cities type thing. So if you live out in the country, in the woods, you know, a million miles from a uh, metropolis, then you'll probably have a good chance of surviving. What you have to worry about, among many things, is radiation. Um, depending on your location, how close you are, you could experience radiation. So, you know, what a lot of people typically do is they buy these little tablet, tablets, it's potassium iodine tablets. You take them and it helps uh, counteract the radiation uh, effects. Well, what if you don't have enough? Um, you know, you, you made a mistake or you, you know, it happened before you were totally prepared and there's six people in your family and you only have enough for four. Well, sorry little Joey, sorry little Sally, don't have enough for you guys. Uh, what if uh, after it happens you take on, uh, you know, some, your neighbor comes over and you don't have enough for them? Well, here is a nearly free, very cheap way to, to fix that. You make your own. It's very easy, especially uh, here in the Ozarks, um, because most places in the Ozarks you will find black walnut trees. They're very common. They're very common in, in a lot of places. Not everywhere, but a lot of places. Um, but most of your walnut trees, you can do this. And if you've ever... Uh, I've got some examples here. Actually, I wanted to get one that's really green. I should have done this a couple weeks ago because there's hardly any green ones left that's on the ground. They've all dropped. But typically, this is a small one. Um, but they're usually a lot more green than this, but this one will still work. And then they get to kind of this stage where they're, they're starting to get, um, you know, they've got a little patches of green, but they're starting to get brown and there's, there's a little softness to them. And then they get to this stage where they're starting to break open. Uh, there's a piece where they're breaking open. And this is where, you know, kind of getting into the stage that you want where you eat them, where you eat the nut inside. Um, and then this outside's the hull. You bust that off. What, what I do, uh, what we do is we collect them, put them out in a driveway, and then we just run over them with the vehicle. And it, it knocks off these hulls because they're already, as you can see, get that to focus. See, they're already coming off. All right, well, when they're green, they're just hard as a golf ball, and you can't do that, okay? But this is what you want. That hull, not the nut inside, not the shell. This hull is very, very high in iodine. And in fact, there's not a whole lot written on this, but if you do some research, uh, it does exist. There's not a lot. That Russia used to put the information out for their people to do this, uh, during the Cold War, and in fact, there's there's evidence that this was done during the Chernobyl um, disaster, that people used this. They make a tincture. Now, for those of you that don't know, that aren't into herbs, maybe you want to know, a tincture is basically an extraction of material. 
um, you, you plant material usually. Uh, and you use typically an alcohol, hard liquor uh, spirits. And this is uh, vodka. This is just plain old vodka. And for something like this, there may be herbalists out there that will argue and disagree. But honestly, any alcohol that's at least 40% alcohol minimum, usually, 35, 40%, but most all your vodkas and whiskeys and stuff like that, even if you don't, and I, I don't drink the stuff, but know about it because I'm an herbalist. And um, anyways, it extracts the, the goodness in the plant, and then it preserves it because it's alcohol, and alcohol will last forever, pretty much, at least your lifetime. And so that's how you make a tincture. That's the, and I'll do another video later on on how to do these, on how to make tinctures, but that's the basics. So what you do um, is you take the green ones. You want to find the green ones. Don't, if they're getting black and soft, no good. You want to find the green ones. You take the green ones, you remove the hull. That's the hard part because when they're still green and they're hard as a brick, it's, it's a pain in the hind end to get the hull off. Um, and I haven't found a real good easy way so basically all I do I did it once without gloves and boy you don't want to do that because you get oh, your hands my hands were black for like a week um, latex gloves or something would work great because any glove you use it's going to get black latex gloves and a good sharp knife and you're just going to peel them basically and it's not easy because this shell hull not shell hull is hard as a brick it's really hard to get it off, but you, you will do it. Approximately a dozen walnuts is usually enough to make one quart uh, of tincture. And then this, what you see here, so you fill up, hold on, let me adjust my stuff here. Put it down like this. Is this going to work? All right, so <clears throat> you have a quart jar. You want to fill approximately three-fourths with hulls. So you peel them off. They don't have to be finely chopped or anything, you know, kind of broken up, you know, quarter nickel size pieces. Put it in there. You want to get it to about three-fourths full, and then you get your vodka, and oh, this is what I missed on earlier. Uh, for something like this, the cheapest vodka you can find will be fine. As long as it's around 40%, um, that will be good enough. And why I say this is you're not taking this internally. This is external. So, you know, if you were taking an internal tincture, you know, I don't use the cheapest, cheapest vodka, mostly because it's awful tasting. Even though you may be only taking drops, it's horrible. So you can use a better quality, slightly better quality uh, spirit. Cat over here. Um, mostly just because of the flavor. But for something like this, this is external cheap, cheap stuff. Get that, you know, you can, you can buy the plastic bottles of vodka for, you know, a liter of it for like four dollars or something. So you fill it up about three quarters of a way full with your green holes that's broken up and then you fill up the jar, almost a full, you know, about right there, uh, with vodka. Close it, date it, right here, black walnut hole, 130 proof. Yeah, this was 130 proof. Um, and then the date. And it's going to take, you know, six, eight weeks. Uh, it'll get black as can be like this is. You want to shake it every few days. There's no holes in here. I already, you know, strained them out. That's why it looks, like, that's why there's only, it's only half full. It's not been used. So once you strain out your, your solid matter, your plant matter, then what's left is the liquid. And this is about half of a quart. Um, now, in using, so that's kind of the brief, um, of how to make the stuff. So now you want to use it or how do you use it because um, there are other uses for black walnut hull tincture uh, mostly from like a pesticide type of thing. Worms. Um, uh, you have worms. Your animal has worms. You can use it. I don't know the dosages of that. I have read it um, but you can kind of find how to do that. But as far as using it for nuclear radiation back to your preppers your survivalists so how do you use it? Well, I have not found any specifics on dosage, but what they did in Russia, what they would tell people to do is to make this stuff and then get like a little paintbrush or rag or whatever and paint it on your knees every day, your kneecaps. They found that that was an area that absorbed the uh, potassium iodine, the iodine in it, um, 
was absorbed through your knees a lot better than ah, sons. I just at the wrong angle, but your knees was the, about the best place to absorb it. So they suggested, you know, once or twice a day, putting it on your knees, just taking it, kind of painting it on your knees. You'll have black knees, but hey, you'll survive the big balloon. And how long do you do it? Well, probably in for a while. Uh, you know, you need to kind of start looking up uh, that, that kind of stuff, you know, how long do you take, um, you know, potassium, uh, for nuclear radiation? Well, a lot of it's going to depend on the bomb size, your location, you know, weather, all that kind of stuff, but you can find that kind of stuff online. I'm not going to go into it, but the point is to this video is to teach you a very cheap, you know, the, the alcohol you can make, I don't know how many, but, you know, one of those cheap big jugs of vodka, you can probably make you know, five, maybe six quarts, at least four quarts of this stuff. Um, and walnuts out here in the woods, man, we got walnut trees. I got a huge walnut grove, which is great. Um, but there's walnuts everywhere. And uh, the hulls is the part that most people don't want. So even if they have walnut trees that they, you know, they uh, want to collect the tree, the nuts from, you know, they'll let you have them hulls. They don't like them. Uh, they'll get you all stained up. So make sure you wear latex gloves. Put them in a cleaned up quart jar. Uh, peeling them sucks, trust me it does. Uh, but about a dozen or so, roughly, in a quart jar. Fill it up with uh, cheap vodka or whatever, whiskey, something, some kind of 40% alcohol, 80 proof. Uh, and put a lid on it, date it, label it, and it needs to set for six to eight weeks. Shake it up every few days, and you will have... Um, a tincture that you can put on you and your family in a, a radiation fallout. I cannot tell you that it's absolutely foolproof. All I can tell you is that uh, there is literature out there, there is writing out there that the Russian government uh, encouraged their people to do this during the Cold War and that there's evidence that it was used successfully uh, in Chernobyl. Uh, and I did actually read, I don't have the information, if you, you know, dig around online, you can find it. There was an article, I believe it was a, st an, a study, possibly. I think the Russian government did, and don't quote me on this because it's been a while since I read this, because I've done this for a long time. So, I could be wrong. Doesn't happen very often. Once or twice a year. Um, but anyways, that they had done some type of study, I believe, and they found that the people that survived uh, Chernobyl, the ones that used the walnut tincture actually had, you know, they were better. It, it, it did better than taking, you know, like iodine tablets or whatever. Um, so this is something to think about. Uh, if you're big into prepping for possible nuclear war, um, that's the main thing to worry about is, do I have enough of this stuff? You know, what's the shelf life? How is it stored? Is it Now, of course, this is bulkier than a little bottle of pills, you know, but you can also put it in those little, um, little tincture bottles, droplet bottles. You can do that. You can have, you know, some for, you know, if you have bug out bags or whatever for everyone in your family, you can put it in, a, you know, all of their bags so that you have it. Um, but hey, uh, it's it's easy, it's, it's nearly free, very little money in that, you know, with the amount of vodka, buying it for four or five dollars a, a liter, I believe is what it is, or roughly a liter, you know, there's maybe 25 cents of alcohol, 50 cents of alcohol in that uh, jar, and that's it. So just some uh, herbalist prepper knowledge passing on to you guys. Uh, this is Travis here at Buckhart Mountain Homestead, and you guys have a great day. We'll catch you later.